It's Germany's largest football temple. 80,000 fans intoxicated on high-octane performance. Dortmund at home is a one-of-a-kind experience. The Signal Iduna Park South Terrace, the most capacious in Europe. Dortmund's famous yellow wall, where 25,000 Borussia diehards gather to cheer on their favourites through thick and thin. It gives you goosebumps. You can't really put it into words. It's a cauldron. You have to be there. Dortmund to the core. Passion and spirit count for more than fancy footwork here. In the Ruhr district, true devotion has to be earned with honest sweat. Dortmund is a city with a proud industrial past, noted above all for its prodigious output of coal, steel and beer. A popular local brand of the latter even gave Borussia their name. The club has long since become part of the city's DNA. Its black and yellow heart lies here at Borsigplatz, scene of many a title celebration, another place of pilgrimage for the faithful. It was here in 1909 that the club's founding fathers called it into life. The Ruhr district soon became established as Germany's footballing heartland. Dortmund won the title three times in the pre-Bundesliga era. What we can say, comrades, is that if we don't play with real consistency, it's not going to reflect well on us. In 1966, Dortmund were the first team to win a European trophy, the Cup Winners' Cup. But they knew lean times as well. Relegation was followed by four years in the second division. Back in the Bundesliga, Dortmund had a newly built Westfalen stadium. And in May 1977, a worm eaten pitch that led to them playing one home game at the ground of arch rival Schalke. It could never end well, as their keeper at the time recalls. If it had been in Duisburg or Bochum, we'd have beaten Köln, but playing them at Schalke was just horrific. Dortmund's struggles were far from over. In 1986, a late playoff goal from Jürgen Wiegmann saved them from the drop. You see the colour of my hair? It's mostly down to that game. By the early 90s, they were on the up again. Successive Bundesliga titles were capped in 1997 with a Champions League triumph in Munich. Then came more problems. Three years after 2002's league title success, the club were on the brink of insolvency. In 2008, Jurgen Klopp took over as head coach, heralding the start of a new golden era for Dortmund, powered by relentlessly high-energy football. If I can get my own absolute belief in what we're doing across to the players through emotion and vitality, that'll be enough. Klopp got down to work assembling a team of young guns who gave the fans the football they wanted, honest, intense and emotional. It was soon proving successful as well. Two league titles, two runners-up spots and a DFB Cup victory in Klopp's seven years at the helm. His departing legacy was a team still brimming with world-class talent. Dortmund not to be through here. Campbell slots it to Royce. Oh, so cool, so calm, so collected. Marco Royce. Marco Royce, superstar, son of Dortmund, lifelong Borussia fan and committed long-term to expanding the club's trophy collection. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, with phenomenal pace and ever more comfortable leading from the front, Last season, he was Dortmund's top scorer. Fans' favourite, Shinji Kagawa. In his second season back from Manchester United, the Japanese attacking midfielder is flourishing again. Mats Hummels, skipper and world champion, equally commanding on the ground and in the air. A well-oiled collective with the sheer individual class to decide a game as well. Now Thomas Tuchel's in charge, and with this team, he can go a very long way indeed. Come on, Young. Oh, he takes some catching. He's quick. Oh, unselfish. An absolutely sensational goal. Wherever their journey takes them next, battling for titles or against the drop, as long as they give it their all, Dortmund can always count on the massed ranks of their faithful fans.